Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way, and today it was bowl back to bowls, back to um, turning, uh, well, winged bowls, or porridger, porringo, I don't know how it's pronounced really, but I read it as porridger, um, which is a winged bowl, which you would normally really see um, being made by pole lathe turners, so Greenwood. I thought, well, let's just not leave it all to them, and let's give it a go ourselves. This is what I'm talking about, one of these, you'll be familiar with these, these are quite ancient um, shapes, forms, as it were. Um, but they're just nice serving bowls, that sort of thing. And I thought, well, we haven't done a bowl for a while. Let's have a play with one of these. It's a nice, simple form. Um, and above all, it's nice to use as well. It's a really pretty shape, I think. And also, a friend of mine um, who I gave some lessons to on the weekend, actually, and the reason I gave him some lessons is because he brought me a hot, um, over um, a couple carloads full of uh, timber at this lovely beach, and it's a spalted beach. Um, so you've got those lovely um, honey fungus lines running through it with uh, quite a lot of weird sort of grey areas as well. If you look at these, it's not like a traditional um, a sort of colour for uh, for beach. In fact, I would say it's more walnut in colour, but it's definitely beach. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play with with that. Doesn't that look pretty? All right. And if you wondered on the trickery on the cameras and things like that and the questions, we've got Steph um, today. So um, fingers crossed, all will go well, Steph, won't it? Well, let's hope so. Good fringe today? Great fringe today. <laughs> Didn't have to worry about the hat hair vibe going on, so that's always good. <laughs> cool. Well, look, let's try and keep this light, <clears throat> excuse me, this light up there as much as I can. Um, don't forget, you know how it works. Ask Steph the questions in the chat and she'll ask me in turn. And we'll do our very best to answer them for you. Um, Steph, could you go to the overhead again? Just have a look at this. You can see I've glued up a few cracks. So there's already a few cracks running through this piece. It's been down a long time, we think. Um, we think it might have been um, dead standing, but then an oak came along and, and, and finished the job. It crashed it down. Um, it had a fork in it, so we're thinking maybe some water got down in that fork and started that that sort of um, decay process. That's, I think that's why this grey area is there as well, um, as well as the spalting. But I really like spalting. If you look at what we've got, we've got, I, I like to think these black lines and spalting are like battlegrounds. So you've got fungus on one side, no fungus on the other, or different types of fungus. So this is why those black lines define the different colours. It's where those fungus meet that they, they react with each other and create these lovely black lines. I think it's a really interesting thing. I know one of it is, one of the fungus is honey fungus. I'm not quite sure what the rest is. Um, but look, even some red lines going on here, black lines, and then there's a lot of mottled areas as well as those grey. It's a bit messy, if I'm honest with you. It's my fault. I was at the um, lazy chainsaw um, on a Friday afternoon. So there's a bit of uh, a bit of tidying up to do before we get to solid timber. There's a, quite a big crack this side as well. But let's keep our fingers crossed. If you think about how the form is going to be, I can do that just to get that in the camera. So we're going to shape these wings um, and take away a lot of this area. I might need to glue as we go. I don't know. And I do have a bandsaw next to me as well. If if uh, just lurking here, it's only a small bandsaw. So all we need is a small bandsaw. So yes, Steph. We have a question. No questions yet. Oh. But I just wanted to say the gentleman with Turner said, do you have uh, fringe envy? <laughs> do I have fringe envy? No, you do. Oh, do I? That's what you said. I can't you remember the last time I had a fringe. No, well, it's, I think it's the case in which you comment about my fringe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Jim B said, welcome aboard. Steph. Steph is super spindle turner. So um, <laughs> I think they're trying to get the name to stick. Yeah, I think so. Super <laughs> spindle turner. Nice. Right then. Let's just rough it down. It's going to be a bit of a battle to start with. So I'm going to put the visor on a little bit big. I might sound a little bit muffled. But you know why. There we go. Right then. So I'm going to bring the speed controller over to me so I can get to it nice and quickly if I need to. Um, I've already done the checks, made sure nothing's touching. Everything's nice and tight and not insecure and insecure and secure sorry and now we'll slowly turn that lathe up we're not going to be allowed to run too fast on this one i can already feel the machine start to want to move so let's just take some of that unbalanced um, material away so nice and gentle to start with
this timber, I know the timber is working really nicely. It, it, it's one of those timbers that's just to a turn that does you a lot of favours. Once we get once we get past all this horrible unevenness, the timber itself is a real beaut to turn. Having the tail stop there just give me a little bit of help to start with. I'm going to try and get this done in an hour, but if we run over a little bit, I, hopefully you'll understand why. It's a, quite a large project. There we go. Let's stop the lathe, get in a little bit closer. Now we're starting to level things up quite nicely now. If I stop the lathe and show you and what we can see there, apart from this wonderful striking grain um, sort of structure and patterns, we're, we're down to almost solid timber, a little bit of a, a, a flat there, but we'll take that out now and then we can start shaping the bowl up around. All right, Steph, at the moment. Yep, doing good so far. So what I've done there, I'm just starting to flatten out the base. And the same as usual, this, you, you, I'm sure you've seen my preferred technique in turning bowls. I like to have a sacrificial base that I can hold, which will be a tenon, and then I can reshape that when the main bowl is finished. So we're going to do that. So I've just put a very slight um, dish in the underside. Let's get rid of the rest of some of this um, uneven stuff here. So start shaping the bowl around. Then I can start turning the speed up a little bit. So it's mainly pull cuts at this stage. There we are. I think we can... Just creep up a little bit. Oh, not that much. <laughs> creep up, not that much. Creep up a little bit. <laughs> there we are. Now we can start bringing that to... That tourist around. Let's get in nice and close. So, I might need to rejiggle the cameras after that movement. <laughs> uh, Lays moving across the floor. <laughs> yeah. little adjustment again and might even go to a bigger tool rest in a minute um, and we're also in a minute start thinking about taking the tail stock out of the way just to give us some space to to turn the base if i can come right up to a full round now so bring all that waste wood out of the way There we are. We'll double check that, make sure we are down to a full round. We are. There's that crack there. We'll keep our fingers crossed with that one. It should be fine. 
Um, and now I'll start forming the base. I will take a measurement in a minute, so don't think I'm not. I'm, I'm don't think I'm doing this blind. I'm not. I just want to start getting rid of some of the excess. So, apart from filling my shelves full of um, full of shavings, we're starting to get toward the shape that I want. Don't forget, I mean, this is going to be a winged roll, so I need to leave material to create the wing, which is going to be this this rim here. This is why I've done it. But we're sort of getting the rough shape. Have I left enough back here? Yes, I think so. I am a little bit cautious about the crack that we still have here. But I think if I tidy at the back now... Just a little bit of a, I just want to just get down to that solid round. So we're just going to cut the back a little bit. So, I mean, it's sounding solid, but I'm not going to speak too soon. So I'm just going to hold there. Um, let's start thinking now about getting this exactly where I want it to be. So I can take the tail sock out of the way. Just for a minute. Just put that back. I'll clean that little lump away as well. So lay speed down, turn the lathe on, turn the lathe up. Now I do that because I've taken the tail stock away. I wanted to make sure I have no surprises. Still a little bit unbalanced, this piece. Sacrificial foot, remember. This tenon is not going to be there by the time we finish the piece. So now my chosen jaw is going to be a big gripper. So it's going to be the, J the Dove Gs or the, the G-type grippers. Yes, Steph. So I have a question here from Donna asking, what size is the blank? Let's have a look. I can give you a rough spot if I measure. It's, I think it's around about sort of 11 inches. Uh, this one's, oh no, it's, it's 12. Yeah, it's the full length of that of that rule. So it's a 12 incher, 300 mil. Perfect. And Don also, also said earlier, that's the sort of lump of wood we all contend with. We don't, we do not always have a round or square balanced blanks. Thanks for uh -huh. doing it live. <laughs> that's good. And, um, Glenn Goodwin's asked me to tell you I can see that crack without my zoomies. Without your zoomies? Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you earlier, Glenn. We met up in the shop earlier, so it was really nice. Nice to say hi. He did say that he met you earlier in the new shop. Yeah. That was good. Um, and Mark, um, Mark Woodward, Woodward say, has asked, can you just explain the bowl gouge angles, please, particularly the long grind? Yeah, sure all of my gouges that i've got in here and this i'm now down to the little little six mil six mil for the brits three eighths for the americans um 55 degree bevel angle on mine um in terms of let's just stop that i don't know if we can get this in shot um which is the best one is there i'm going to try my very best to that um so you can see the sort of um so a curve on the front, I suppose you'd call it. It's not as extreme as something like an L's or a fingernail would be. Um, it's, it's it's curved enough to get the corners out of the way, and that's the most important thing for me. And, and it, the same with teaching. I would I would sort of call this more of an Irish grind than anything else. Um, it's an in-betweener. 
okay the further back you bring that bevel so 55 degrees here at the moment further back you bring it the more um uh, the more aggressive they become but the more detailed that you can get into as well um, if you bring the bevel back up that would be what we refer to more as a bottom feeder so if we're going across the bottom of a bowl and this is sort of an in-between okay sort of an in-between okay. the gentleman would turn has come on saying tormek setting 65 mil whole a jig setting for got it <laughs> you got it um, and ted weeks has also asked what is the width of the overhang please width of the overhang Six, um, if we're talking protrusion through a jig, it's 65 mil, if that's what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah no. The, no, sorry, the overhang of, um, that was a question before the jig, I think. The overhang of the lip of the bowl, maybe? I'm not oh, sure. right, yeah, sorry, of course, <laughs> of one. course, yeah, no, I get it. I what, get what it. you're making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, let's have a, I, have no, I haven't set it, really. I've just looked at it and thought, oh, that's about right. Um, but that one at the moment, that's ooh, going to be getting on to about 30. These finished ones, I've got a 20 on that one. I've got a, oh, I've got a 30 on that one. So this one's going to be what it's going to be in about five minutes, I we'll think. Find out. We'll tell you at the end, Ted. Yeah. Um, and um, JPN Company has asked, is that rippled beach as well as salted? Um, th there was a little bit of rippled in this one. Uh, this one here, just a little bit. It's sort of a lot. I've got lost now, really. Then, amongst everything else, there's a little bit of pippiness in there. So a little bit of bird's eye, um, spalted water discoloration, loads of stuff in this one. The other nice thing about this, it's not fully dried and it's not green. So it's that halfway house. So that means it's going to turn what well, is turning beautifully. Um, but also, I could be able to sand this to a finish now, and I'm not going to get any cracking going on. So it's that really nice point you know it's that halfway house for stuff like this which i'm going to oil that's fine if you're going to wax it if you're going to um put lacquer on it's not so good so if, for oiling for sort of live kitchenware that sort of thing absolutely perfect um and the materials moving um only little only very slightly so it's allowing allowing um drying without cracking so let's now i won't be able to turn the lathe up too much it's just a, still a little bit out of balance but i want to start getting some finishing cuts so I'm going to start off with a little shear down by the foot. Just leave a little bit, of, a little bit proud right down the bottom, and then I'll do a push cut. Just looking at both um, edges there. So I'm looking down at what the chisel's doing. I'm also looking at the top edge and I'm looking at the shape as well. I want I want that, that shape to be a nice blended one. A little bit of an error there. Take out, that's good. Just a little lump I want to remove. That's it, got that. Right, now we can start thinking about the handles. Just getting those in. tip the edge around i don't want anything sharp there so let's just soften that edge and just when you thought you were going to get away with it and i wasn't going to use it let's get the skew going so a nice little scrape just to give me a little bit of definition this is going to really help when i come to to, to um to bounce all this away in a minute also let's just tidy that edge up You might think I'm being a little bit quieter today. It's only because, it's only because 
this is quite a concentrated project for the time scale that I'm doing in. I want to get this finished for you, and I don't want to. And we're going to be doing questions. We are answering all the questions. We definitely will answer all the questions. Um, but yeah, I want to get it done. I'm going to get it done. There, we're ready to sand now. We're going to go right the way through. Um, I'm going to use power sander and. Uh, Unlike in my own home, here we're going to use a cordless drill for, for driving the power sander. Normally at home I'd use a, a corded one, with um, which is a lot faster. We're going to put up with it. We're going to have dust extraction going all of the time. I'm not going to change the speed. I, I don't change the speed when I'm sanding unless it's a very fragile piece like a piece of yew or exotic timbers, those sorts of things. Um, so I'm just going to go for it. Um, we're starting with... A 100 grit on a, pa sorry, no, I'm not. I'm starting on a 120. And then we're going to work our way up to 400. I might need to do a little bit of hand sanding as well. But we'll see. One thing that I haven't done yet, which I will need to do, is just put a little center point in that in that area there, because we're going to mount this between centers to finish that base off. I always forget it, so I'm going to just finish this 120 grit and then sand. Sorry, and then put the tail stock in. Go right up. Can't get the power sander right in there, so I am going to go to some hand sanding just to do the inside of that uh, that little handle. If you want to see designs of these, go online, put in porridge, so um, P O R R I N G E R, and you'll see lots of designs for these. It's a very old shape. I could say traditionally nowadays seen um, being made on pole laves, greenwood turners, that sort of thing. Now, there we are. This is the first grill. Let's just have a double check and see if we've got rid of all the nasties. Everything we don't want to have at the end. Let's just see if we've got rid of it. Oh, the scratches from these, these coarser grays, of course. So I'm looking for tears and nasties and things like that. It's fairly good. Timber's looking after me quite well. There we are, that one's good. So whilst I'm hand signing, let's just go up to the next grade. In this case, it's a 150. Just to get into those places that I can't get into with the power sander. There we are, back to the power sander. And now we're going up to 150 on that one. Same thing again, and it's just a repeat, really. There we are. So we'll change now to forty on both hand and power. So not forgetting to get underneath that little handle, look. Two forty grit, remember this one. Grand right, four hundred. I'm not going to put any finish on this until the whole thing's done. 
because I want to sand the lip in a minute. I want to sand the base. And any oil on there will start to just it clogs the abrasive up too quickly. So I'll do it all at the end. So 400 on the power sander. Have a stop and a look before we go over to 600. Pretty old timber, this one. It's really, really lovely. So let's. A little bit of 600 just to finish off. Turn off dust extraction. And yes, Steph. Yeah, so we've got a couple of questions. Um, David has asked here, have you ever used the microwave drying method to accelerate the green rough bowl drying process and twice turn a bowl, or is that taboo? Um, I have done that. Yeah. Yeah, I got into real trouble with me mum. Because <laughs> everything we put in that microwave afterwards absolutely stank. Um, I think it was walnut, and it's really it's not pleasant um, when it's drying. Yeah, it works really well. I would invest in a cheap microwave of your own that you can have in your workshop. <laughs> don't use um, the kitchen don't one. Don't use the kitchen one because <laughs> the kitchen then starts to smell a little bit and you'll become really unpopular. I remember Jason putting a bit of um, wood into the microwave here to kill some woodworm, and I remember that being quite stinky. <laughs> um, we've got another couple of questions as well. John, it's a bit of a question and a bit of a suggestion. Um, do Colwyn, Jason or Ben work with gold leaf gilding? And if so... Um, is there any chance of demonstrating ready for Christmas? Well, Steph, isn't that a thing? That's almost I mean, like we had that question primed. We didn't. Christmas is coming, John. Christmas is coming. <laughs> so, well, Colin couple is of, ready. <laughs> couple of reasons I said that. We've had a few meetings this week we talking have. Christmas. I've been in my happy place. It's been not, it's been great. Um, but we've got a few products on the way, a few new products, which we can't really talk about yet because they're not ready. Um but due at the end of October, early November, which is perfect for all of our Christmas decorations, they will include um, so gold, copper, and variegated effect leaves and all the application um, tools, uh, as well as lots of other goodies um, for, um, for for great Christmas presents. So yeah, we've got lots of gift ideas, lots of gift ideas, lots of um, demonstrations that we're all primed up. Not just me, not just turning. Um, but Ben um, on the flat work for his embellishing, for pyrography and things like that. So some really quite exciting new things coming. Um, so, yeah, you're going to see that. In fact, I think we've still got our first one scheduled in for early November. Um, so, yeah, watch this space. Something to look forward to, John. Um, David has asked, uh, what's the benefit of using a power sander versus using a bowl sander? Uh, okay. Very different tools. With a, with a power sand, if you're if you're doing a batch of bowls, then power sand all the time. It's quick. It's more aggressive. It's quicker. Blah blah blah. Um, if you're, I tend to enjoy hand sanding, um, but intermixing a bowl sander. So the the regular, uh, I don't have one. No, it's I do. Right. That one that's just fell on the floor. I'll Steph, get it you. for you. Bowl sander, so a rotary sander that acts with the inertia of the bowl. <laughs> She's on her hands and knees down here. Thank you very much. Um, one of those little bowl sanders. So it, it reacts with the movement of the lathe. Um, if you start in terms of hand sanding will be um, your first, um, the gentlest method of sanding. This the next, but quicker and power sanding the next, but even quicker again. But if you mix the hand sanding with one of these up, they crisscross each other. So you get, a, 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 in, in its own right, you get a quicker method of sanding and you lose the scratches. They cancel each other out. So it's a really great way of working. Um, so power sander, the only difference with it is a quicker and aggressive, more aggressive uh, method of the same thing. That's all it is. Yes, sir. Um, one more question here and then... Uh, an insight from the Artful Bodger after. Um, what do you do to hide the tiny holes in the spalted wood, especially end grain? 
Oh, there isn't really here. It's not gone that far yet. It's not as as punky, as pithy as as it could be. So, yeah, I've got a, yeah, really, the, I guess the right moment in time for for this to be harvested. Like I said, whether it died standing, I don't know. Um, but it's working really quite well. I'm just tapping to make sure I'm not going to lose anything here. There's a massive crack right there. Look, you can see it. Um, yes. At the Artful Barge. I like a good insight. You may have noticed. Did you forget to mark centre? No, I didn't. Ah, see, I didn't say when i done it. Um, but I did do it. I brought the tail sock up just to mark that centre point. I was going to say, I didn't notice you do that. So I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd done it just after I finished sanding. I did say I was going to do it after the first grade, but I'd done it just after the sanding. That's all right, then. Well done. <laughs> You'll see in a minute when I turn it around. Um, right, let's work on the, the top lip first. We're going to have to take that tail stock out the way. I'm going to do this really slowly because if I don't, Steph has got the monitor over there and all the gadgetry. I'm going to cover her in shaving. So um, I'm going to take it, take my time with this. Thank it's you. just, <laughs> it's just the way this timber is working. It's cutting so well. Try not to get my light in the way of the camera. There we are. Let's start with, um, let's go three eight or half inch, depending on where you live. Remember that big crack that we've got on this piece? So I'm just going a little bit careful. And what we're doing here, we're forming the top edge. So we're forming this area now of the of the handle. Let me just stop. I'm not nervous at all, but I just want to stop and just check to see where everything is, where that crack is, what it's doing. It's almost gone invisible, which is brilliant. I just want to say as well, the gentleman woodturner is not being very gentlemanly. He wants you to cover me in shaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's his sense of humour. That's Mark's sense of humour. I can see him sniggering now. I can imagine it. <laughs> well, that's going to take a good sounding in a moment. Let's just check and make sure that... I was quite aggressive then with that scrape. Let's just... Go a little bit calmer. Knowing that I've got that big split there, I'm not going to go too thin with that handle. So now we can, let's do the fun bit. So grab a pencil, look down the lathe. That mark there, <coughs> excuse me, is where the outside would come up to um, if I allowed it. We're going to leave ourselves a good amount of space. That is my do not cross line. I cannot go, or I must not go any further than that. Okay, I'm going to leave myself some, some nice wall thickness. This is a functional piece. I, it's not an arty piece. I don't need to go thin. It's a, a kitchen piece. I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions about all oh, spalted beach. I don't, you don't want to have that in the kitchen, but this is going to be dry. It's going to be covered in oil. I don't ex expect to put soup and things like that in it. It'll be a, a bread bowl, bread basket for serving, all those sorts of things. So we're just starting at near the center and pushing down. Is that visible? Do I need a bit more light on that stuff? I'm going to try Let me just bring that light around a little bit so it's out of everyone's way. Can that? That's better, isn't it? As I open this hole up, that will shed a little bit more light as well. Thank you. 
We've got a few um, demonstrations coming up, and one that I wanted to, to um, talk to you about, or let you know about in the future, next couple of weeks, um, is turning uh, driftwood. And it's going to be a Q&A, so if you have any questions on turning driftwood, we're going to try our best again to ask them. Send them in in advance so we can research if we don't know. But um, it's given me a chance to getting paid for going for a walk down the beach foraging driftwood. We know you like an easy morning. What's that? So we know you like an easy morning. <laughs> There we go. So that's deep enough for the minute. What I'm going to do now is carry on making those cuts and not go any deeper than what we've got at the moment, but come out the way, come all the way out to my line. So the same cut down. I'll stop there, do the same thing again. Again. And we'll stop and just have a check. What I'm checking for is the wall thickness. Is it thin enough? And it's not. It's a bit chunky at the moment. So we're going to take it down. Even though I said them, I do not cross line. That was for my reference. So I know exactly where everything is. So now probably taken out about another three to four mil. So just over that one eight. Stop and check. And I'm sure that's fine. Uh, maybe one more cut. That's more like it. Right, now we can start taking the rest of the, the body out. Have a little adjustment of the tool rest just to bring me in a little bit closer. Yes, there. Uh, so we've got a couple of questions. We've got a couple of comments as well. Um, gentleman Wood Turner Mark says teaching a skew yesterday. They absolutely love the Colwyn Way's signature skew. Not that he needs, you know, more information <laughs> that that skew is great, even though we already know it is. Um, and Maria thinks that me and you should swap places. I think I would absolutely massacre something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day. And uh, she's also said as well that she's turned some driftwood pieces in the past. Sometimes they absolutely stink and sometimes they smell okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. always good. We found that out earlier this week. Oh, we did. Way. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's the length of time they've been in, been in the sea. I guess so. Or what they've been sat with on the um, strand line. Sometimes, I guess, is no, a big yeah. thing. Um, the Artful Bodger has asked as well, for twice-turned bowls, do you measure the moisture content for the second turning? If so, is there an optimum range of moisture content? I don't. I tend to go by uh, um, by the feel of the piece. I, I, I'm i guessing, I mean, if you absolutely do wanted no movement whatsoever, whatsoever, then, yeah, I would check. 
And you, you're looking around about 12%. That, that, that works nicely. Um, if you go kiln dried stuff, it's very dusty and horrible, and you're getting right down to sort of 10% then as well. Yes, there. Uh, apparently, Mark's nickname is Fluffy as well. Oh, I didn't know that. He didn't let me in on that one. No, apparently when he's going to he's gonna come and teach me to turn a, a box, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Apparently I've got to ask him to wear his tutu. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. Pink. It's right <laughs> absent, moment because it's a pink tutu uh, what, with Barbie and everything. Well, it'll be perfect then, won't it? We'll match the trend. Um, and Martin Crosswell's been on. Um, Hi, Colwyn and Seth. What is the best thing to do with a spindle blank that has been waxed when turning between centres, please? That has been waxed, waxed, waxed. Ah, but when but, turning between centres. When turning between centres. So I guess maybe it's been fully waxed rather than just the ends. Um, I well, just turn it off. I mean, if you're thinking the friction drive, maybe then I would get rid of that wax before you start turning because obviously that's going to stop the friction. Um, but apart from that, don't worry about it. Just turn it, turn it away. I get where you think. Well, with the shavings, but you know, most of the time it's paraffin wax that's used. Um, so not toxic wax that sort of thing um so i wouldn't worry about it too much um be, be careful of floor and 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 the wax on the floor that can create slip hazards especially if you're in a, a school or a workshop with several people just be aware to sh clean those shavings out of the way before they get too slippery but no apart from that don't worry about it just turn right through it cool we're getting close to this first bit now let's just bring that form around And we'll just do a double check. A bit more. One more, I would say. Double check again. That is going to be absolutely fine. Let's take the rest of the bottom out. Just taking my time a little bit here. I don't want to start tearing the bottom of this out. Remember, now we're going across the, the bottom and into end grain. Now, to start with, I'm going to look in here. I'm going to look with my hands first. And actually, I'm, that's a really nice curve i'm pleased with that if i'm actually thin enough which i am i'm done that's that's good i'm checking for lumps bumps um any hollows those sorts of things and those are the things we'd need to work on but i'm i'm quite pleased with that so we'll stick with it and let's have a look look at that lovely timber i mean it is incredible piece of wood you never not quite know because each cut you get with this you'll change that slightly so you know, if you if you want to make a another cut, these this big patch here will open up and others will close. So let's sand that up now. Any more before nope, I we're good for a minute. All right, good. We can carry on. Excellent. So back to our hundred grit on the rotary sander on the power sander. Sorry, I don't need to go to hand sanding now. This is all going to be power sanding. I might just add a little bit of six hundred right in at the end.
All right, let's just have a look. So first grade is the important one. That's the one that takes away all the horrible bits, the nasties. A little bit of marking around here I need to clean off still. Bottom looks good. Yeah, just that, that, that end, that end grain. There we are, 180. Two forty. Four hundred. Pretty. And a um, little bit of 600 just to finish it off, giving it a nice little glaze. Keep checking and looking at to make sure we've got no hands in the air for questions. No, we're good. They've gone quiet all of a sudden. There's going to be a little flurry in a minute. I can feel it. Sorry, Steph, say that again. I said they've gone quiet for the minute, but I think there's going to be a flurry in the minute. <laughs> Even that crack is starting to look like a bit of spalting. That's quite nice. That's good. But saying that, we might as well. Yeah, that's going to come out pretty much in the in the handle in a moment. Good. So that's the bowl done. We've got to take away the base now. Look at that. It's pretty in Lovely bit of timber, that one. Okay. So we are just going to swap this... Um, Chuck over, yes, Steph. Go so, for it. Maria's asked, Are you going to cut? Uh, are you going to be mindful of the grain and spalting when you cut the handles, or are you just going to cut it old, any old house? Yeah, so what I want to do, if you look at the other two that I've got here, they've both got the same grain orientation. So, uh, there we go. So, you've got the end grain, uh, here, so here, so the side grain, which is potentially the weaker area, I've taken that away. If I had this as side grain, it's it could snap off easily. So I've got the grain running this way on both of them. And I'll do the same on this one. Unfortunately, that will mean that some of that spalting is going to disappear um, on here, but it would be the only way to do it. I, I just feel it will be unsafe um, and they could potentially snap, especially with this one here already having that crack running down it. So we'll try and get rid of that. Uh, yes, Steph. Uh, John Barnes has been on um, asking, what do you do with the demo bowls? Uh, these demo bowls, um, I'm going to take these home and I'll probably sell them. Every single one. You're saying we can't take them home? I've got a little demonstration for... Um, uh, of, oh, I'm going to get in trouble now because I'm going to forget the village. It's only five miles away from me. Um, just down the road in about through... Well, no, next week, actually. Um, and I'm going to take these with me. It's to a group of people. We're raising money for the village hall. Um, and... 
So it's a group of, this is an unusual one for me, because well, it's not unusual, but it's just, it's for a group of non-turners. So they're not specifically turners. Normally I'm demonstrating to people that sort of, sort of know what they're doing. Um, they're interested in turning or they're in a turning club, that sort of stuff. But this is a group of people that um, I'm just, just going down to show them what turning is all about, really. So I'm going to take all of these down there. Generally, though, he leaves them with us. He leaves all of his projects with us, and then we <laughs> the lucky dip of who gets what. <laughs> if you ask any demonstrator, turner, um, professional, then most of the time, you know, we're turning at speed here, so we're not investing the time that we would want to invest most of the time in finished pieces. So most demo pieces never end up um, going to galleries or things like that. So... Uh, Steph's right. Most of them end up here and being sold to the staff at Christmas for Christmas presents and things like that. Yeah, and then that raises money for our chosen charity as a company. There we go. Or I invested in a new log burner last year. So they end up on the log. You can't do that with these ones, though. They're too nice. No, these are nice, actually. It's a new shape for me. I, I was I was really interested. I, through I had a visit up to up to London, and I went to a, a little event there held by the the Worshipful Company Turners. And there was a, a Steve Sinclair, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he was there demonstrating his stuff. Um, uh, Robin Wood is another one that I've seen doing this before. And there's a French Turner. Um, can't remember what his name was now. But um, I've seen these forms that they do, and it's really intrigued me. I reference all of these. I'm doing a, um, a an article on these very pieces for Wood Turning Mag Magazine, which will be out in November. So all of the names that I'm trying to remember will be in that magazine. And there'll be a how-to and a run-through as well. Don't forget there's going to be a blog for this just to jog your memory as well. That will be out within the week on our usual Woodworking Wisdom blog page. There we are. That'll do. You can make the the base as big as you want. I'm erring on caution there. I don't want to go through the bottom of the bowl. Um, it always makes a good demonstration, but just for this one, I want it to finish. So I'm not going too shallow on the base. Let's just saying that. Let's just take one more cut. go Taurus out the way bit of sanding no that stays on So I see a line, a little bit of a turning line. Sanded out, sand it out. 180. Two forty. Four hundred. 
and a little bit of hand sanding in the center, where I can't get to with the power sander. Look, fine. So a little bit. Let's start with the 150. Go through to 240. Good, happy with that. So now, next thing, it's all rest out of the way. We're going to add a little bowl sander into the chuck. Come out of our way for a minute. Good to do our usual thing, take away that nib. So our push plate can come off. Back to one side. Go back to our hand sander. Sorry, not our hand sander, our power sander head. I'm going to add the... 120 grit. We may need to go to a, a fresh one, but let's see. Lay speed up now to do this. This is a small pad. There we are, 180. Two forty. Of course, finishing on the four hundred. When you do the last one, when you do the four hundred, you yeah, angle to start with. But then you can spread out to the hole of the base just to give it a nice finishing sound there. There we are. So you can see the sort of finish we're expecting. Sander can stay there. I will change to a, a 120. We mean might need to go down to a 180. But let's just get rid of that extractor for the moment. I'm going to go to the bandsaw. We're going to take the wings off. Let's just show you how we mark ready to do that, though. So I need pencil and there. So, yes, yeah, Steph, if you can just guide that camera around just for the minute. I'm going to work on... Yeah. Well, the marking on the lathe bed is only going to be very brief, so I'm not going to do too much marking. Um, I'm going to have fairly small handles. So my initial marks are, what I'm doing here is just looking at, let's say I want to make a six-inch handle, a wide handle. So there's my six-inch mark, 150 millimeters, okay? I'm just putting a mark this side as to where that that will come. Now, to make sure I get this the same both sides, all I'm going to do now is go to the bandsaw and set my rip fence. So that's on the blade, that's on the rip fence. I'll cut this line here, then literally flip it while the fence is in place, line that up so it looks parallel, and I'll do the same the other side. Once I've done that, I can put my rule back on over it, mark this area again just with a pencil, um, and then we're away. I'll do that from the other side. I'll explain it all as we go. So 
Perfect, Steph. See, while you weren't looking, whilst I was doing a, a bit of deflection there, Steph was changing the rig around. So it's brilliant. So let's bring rear fence over. So there's my mark. And all I'm going to do now is cut up to the bowl, so the round section of bowl. Same thing here. So all I want to do, I'm lining up, I'm using a little bit of an imagination, straightening that line through and cutting the other side. There we go. Now I'm going to turn the bouncer off. I'm going to come back to the overhead camera. Okay. I can see my lines here. So I'm going to put the rule on those lines. And we're on the top at the moment. So I'm just going to scribe. Pencil mark right there. And once I've got that in vision, I'll bring that over. And I've marked that. That's all I need to do. I don't need to worry about this side because we're going to set the rip fence again, get them in in um, uh, in position. Or I wouldn't need to worry about that, would I? That's gone right. That's good. So then there we are. A little bit higher on this one. My um, my bands are at home a little bit deeper, so I can use the rip fence on the other side. I don't think I'm going to get that through there, that side. So I'm just going to have to be a little bit careful and jig it around. So instead of doing that, I'm going to come back the other way. Sorry, I'm mumbling there. I'm sort of working as I'm, as I'm finding issues. So my bounce are at home. I can set the guide up or the rip fence this side. That one's a little bit too small. I can't get it there, so I'm just going to have to turn it over. I'm a little bit apprehensive to try and cut the bowl that way up because it won't be stable enough. So I am going to freehand this one. So I'm going to mark an imaginary line on the other side as well. And you can then, of course, you can measure across if you need to. Make sure you've got them the same. But I'm eyeballing this as much as I can. Okay. So we're going to turn it over, bring that line through. Okay. So the next thing, we've done the two lines. Now we just need to remove this section. So I'm going to start by cutting around. You won't be able to see too much of this. I'm going to avoid the flat line, but I'm going to try and hug the bowl quite close. Removes that piece. That then leaves that area. I wonder if I can get that in there. Not quite. We'll come back to that then. It's coming from the other way. You know, some of this, I can sand some of this away, but I want to get rid of as much as possible. Good. Other side.
There we are. So that's our shape so far. All we have to do now, though, that's left a, a sort of a rough, ragged edge on this side here that we're going to go back to the lathe and clean up. So it's given us given us a couple of spare pieces. We're not going to use those, so I can put that out of the way. And we're going to stick with we're going to stick with this disc. Let me just reseat it. We might need to go to a a fresh one but let's just see what that will do i'll put the dust extraction back on again and we'll just sand that to clean We are. You can hopefully see where we're going with this. So actually that side's almost done. So I'm just trying to eliminate any little lines that might be there. Little ones still. Going back to the other side. I don't want any bouncer lines at all, that's obvious, but I don't want any turning lines there as well. So I'm just making it look as though this bowl is just a continuous form. There we are, that's good. So 180. Running over a bit, everybody. Really sorry. It won't, it won't be much longer. You know, just looking for that little fan saw mark to disappear. Nice little cuts here. We're going to do one more grip, 240, and then we'll put some oil on there.
Right, I think that'll do us just for the for the day. Let me get my visor off. We'll turn the dust extractor off. All I want to do is just a, a little, just a light dust over with the 600 grit on any sharp edges, just to get rid of those, knock them away. Any questions, Steph, whilst I'm doing this bit? Um, so uh, we had a question which I think has potentially been answered by everybody on the chat. Uh, but Elizabeth asked, could you cut the um, edges, the excess wings off on a scroll saw? Uh, she doesn't have a bouncer at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Good. Much, much um, friendlier, safer way of doing it, absolutely. But the same thing, though, keep the wings low. Don't have the bowl stood up on it in its uh, normal axis like this. Have it upside down. Um, I'm very hesitant of not having it supported when I'm working on them, you know. Sounds good. Mm. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Martin Crosswell saying that he's definitely going to be making some of these. So thanks very much for the demo today. Um, and, yeah. Looks like it's been a good one. Colin. They're fun, aren't they? I mean, they're they're different. We we turn a lot of bowls in as demonstrators and wood turners alike, um, but this is a different one. This is like I say, it's taking it from taking it from the green wood turners, pole lathe turners. Ooh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done very well by getting it done in just over an hour. We're so getting there. <laughs> we're getting there a little bit more love for this one um over the next couple of days because this oil is going to dry overnight i want to make sure i don't leave any oil to pull so just using that to come over to the back surface this is a citrus oil this is the hampshire sheen citrus oil the reason i'm using that is just a natural oil it's a it's sort of for me it sort of suggests that it should have a natural oil on it and as opposed to something like a finishing oil so i'm like a food safe, you know, so the mineral oils, uh, citrusy oils, lemon, <laughs> lemon oils, as I take in a huge waft of, <laughs> of orange. It smells delicious. It I always gorgeous. love the smell of this finish. And um, Martin has asked, what was the thickness of the blank at the beginning? The thickness of the blank was, it was quite a lump. It was a good six inches. So it was a good, but it was a random. So one side it might have been seven and the other side sort of, sort of around about six. It was quite a lump. There we are. So what this what will this will need to have happen now is it's going to dry overnight. Sorry, get my head in the way. Um, it's going to dry overnight, and uh, you'll need to buff in the morning. So be quite vigorous with it. Good old buff and burnish. Then give it a very light coat again. This one's quite a heavy coat, but I don't want it to pull. Like I say, I'm going to wipe off that surface. Sure that's covered. Put it on a wooden a bit of scrap wood or a bit of tissue. Don't put it on the put it on your workbench. You're gonna have a lovely um oil uh, ring. Certainly don't put it on a metal surface and leave it there because you might get rust, even though there's oil there, you might get rust. It is a you know it's quite a wet piece as well. <coughs> there we go. I'm being <laughs> being overcome by um citrus oil at the moment but there we are like that. that's pr what a pretty bit of timber you know as wood turners we this is what excites us really we get lovely bits like this this was rescued from the firewood pile remember this is what my mate was doing he was cutting logs for firewood on the farm and um he said i've got something a little bit interesting for you would you like it and uh luckily said yes and this is what we've got from it so there's, there's three bowls so far and there's a whole load back in the workshop and he turned one with me on the weekend as well so we saved them from um from the fire well any saved. questions uh no no questions i think that's it just everybody saying what a great demo it's been um and the gentleman would turn us saying uh nice work but he is a gentleman really <laughs> so i guess time will tell when he comes here and uh, exactly teaches me himself <laughs> Look, guys, thank you so much for, for stopping by. It's been a little bit late today, another 15 minutes longer than it should have been. But uh, thank you for, for sticking with it. Give it a go. You might have a laugh. It, it, it is a fun project to make. It is a little bit easier when the wood is a little bit damp as, damp as well. So that does make a big difference. Don't forget, every time I say it, give us a thumbs up if you like what you see. Share us around and subscribe to the channel, of course. So until next time, don't forget the Q&A about the, the driftwood, um, driftwood turning. Until then. Bye-bye.